breaking news and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. Prince Harry has been accused of deliberately destroying evidence in his latest phone hacking case. Let me give you all the details you need to know. Hey up everyone, it's me, Steph, the Alter Nerd, your nerdy alternative, and welcome to another dose of the Daily Nerd, where I break down the royal news and gossip of the day that's pretty much caught me eye, and oh my goodness, yes, let's jump into this madness, shall we, because like I said, breaking news, this is insane, Prince Harry has just been accused of deliberately destroying evidence in his latest phone hacking case against the news group newspapers, for those that don't know who they are, one of the newspapers that they own is The Sun, okay, so they're they're seeking release of emails as well as texts, WhatsApp sent and received by Prince Hazza. Now they're saying they're accusing him of deliberately destroying potential evidence related to his high court phone hacking claim against NGN, we'll say now at this point, news group newspapers uh, that publishes, like I said, newspapers such as The Sun. Uh, they're seeking the release of emails as well as text messages, WhatsApp messages sent and received by Hazza and material held on two particular hard drives that have been encrypted. Now, the publisher is also demanding to see records of communication between Prince Hazza and Sir Clive Alderton, which is the King's private secretary, as well as Sir Michael Stevens, the keeper of the Privy Purse and treasurer to King Charles. Now, they also want access to the many texts sent between Hazza and J.R. Moringer, who was the ghost writer for his memoir, Spare, otherwise known as Wah. Uh, now, Prince Hazza's lawyer, his barrister, David Sherborne, said the pair communicated via signal and their chat history was wiped before the book was published in January last year. So what he's turning around and saying is, well, hang on a minute, uh, the conversations between Hazza and his ghostwriter for Spare, that was all on this app called Signal, and the whole chat history was completely deleted before Spare was published in January of last year. Hmm, how convenient, huh? Uh, he also said that three hotmail addresses that were used by Prince Hazza prior to 2014, so you've got spikewales at hotmail.com, spikewells at hotmail.com and bazasales69 at hotmail.com were no longer accessible. However, Hazza's lawyers and barristers, his whole legal team, have searched other email accounts to which he has access. So you've got h at sjpkp.com and you can see them there. It's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, which span a period from January 2014 until April this year for three keywords and is now searching them for 55 search terms that NGN want to also find. Uh, now, Mr. Sherborne described NGN's disclosure application as a fishing expedition. Of course he would. Uh, the royal family solicitors, Harbottle and Lewis, have insisted they hold no documents that are in the claimant's control. So, in other words, the royal family is like, this ain't got no to do with us. This is all on hazard. Leave us out of it. We want to be excluded from this narrative quite a wise decision uh but as we know Hazza and more than 40 others are suing ngn over alleged unlawful information gathering and invasion of privacy a trial has been scheduled for january very very similar to the mirror group newspaper hacking trial that happened last year if you guys remember and so Anthony Hudson KC for NGN accused Hazza of obfuscating and said that if he wanted access to documents from his former solicitors or from the royal household, he should be given them. It's a good point, isn't it? Uh, he also accused Prince Hazza of trying to create an obstacle cause to prevent the publisher obtaining potential evidence and said his legal team had been dragged kicking and screaming to search a cache of 36,000 potentially relevant emails. In other words, Hazza's not making it easy for them. And again, they're accusing him of deliberately destroying potential evidence related to the phone hacking claim. In particular, the conversations that he had with his ghostwriter for Spare, that apparently all those conversations were deleted before the book was released. Why delete them? To me, why delete them? I'm just asking for a friend. That is highly suspicious. 
Uh, he told the court there ought to be proper evidence about this. Those messages are clearly within his control, even if they have been deleted. That's why we say the search for texts and WhatsApps is important. It is, I'm afraid we say, another example of the obfuscation in relation to the claimant's case. We say it's shocking and extraordinary that the claimant has deliberately destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Now, Mr. Justice Fancourt, who also presided over the Moore Group newspaper hacking trial, all right, interrupted them to say, well, we don't know what has happened. It's not at all clear. But Mr. Hudson for News Group newspaper said it's of great concern. It needs to be clarified in very short order. And so the court heard that Prince Hazard received two encrypted hard drives compromising, uh, sorry, comprising work documents from his staff's shared drive, to which he originally claimed he no longer had access. Hmm. So he originally said he didn't have access to these hard drives, but then all of a sudden he does. So... He's now turning around and saying, oh, well, these conversations between me and my ghost writer are deleted. Well, what's to say that they're not deleted and they kind of show up somewhere and he gets them all of a sudden, just like these two hard drives. That's how I'm reading this. What do you think? This is all very, very dodgy on Hazard's part. Uh, however, just hours before the High Court hearing on Thursday, it emerged that they had been found, one at his California home and the other at the office of his US lawyer. So again... He's turning around and saying, oh, well, whoopsie, the uh, messages between me and my spare ghost rider are deleted. Hmm. Well, what's to say that they won't crop up um, in some kind of archive, right? He originally said he didn't have access to these two encrypted hard drives, but oh, wouldn't you know it? One was at his damn home and the other one was at his uh, US lawyer's office. Oh, come on, Hazza, pull the other one. Uh, as has insisted, he's not aware, aware of any other portable data storage devices, uh, cloud storage locations, or backup tapes in his control. Yeah, okay. Uh, according to court documents, he's conducted extensive searches, including a physical search of his home in California. Yeah, right. Come on. You really believe that when he's all about respect my privacy, especially at home? Yeah, okay. Uh, he claims he no longer has any laptops, mobile telephones, desktop PCs, or backups of his data from before September 2013. You really believe that, guys? And that his former Hotmail email addresses used pre-2014 had been deactivated and were no longer accessible. You really believe that, guys? Um, now... The uh, Prince Hazard had also contacted Lord Christopher Gate, who was the, the late Queen Elizabeth II's former private secretary, Sally Osman, a former director of Royal Communications, Sir David Manning, a former UK ambassador to the United States, and Nick Lochran, his former deputy communications secretary, who said they did not hold anything relevant from the time period. Of course, they're going to say that, right? Uh, a revised draft order sent from NGN to the Duke's legal team this month requires the royal household, Sir Clive and Sir Michael, to provide hard copy and electric documents held by the household that record or contain communications sent to or by on behalf of or relating to the Duke. Hmm. You really think that the court's going to get that? I think something's going to be lost in the mail, I'm just saying. Uh, Mr. Sherbon said the that the suggestion that his client had dragged his feet, had to be dragged kicking and screaming, had set up some kind of obstacle course was incorrect. Well, again, he's saying originally, oh, I don't have access to these encrypted hard drives, but all of a sudden he does. One of them was found in his damn home. Now he's turning around and saying, well, these messages that I had between myself and my ghostwriter for spare, that was on uh, another app. And, oh, wow, mm, whoops, they're all deleted before the book was uh, released. Hmm. Well, when he originally said that he didn't have the hard drives, but then they all of a sudden cropped up, one of which was at his damn house. You really, really, really believe that the messages between him and his ghostwriter prior to Spare being released are completely deleted and cannot be found whatsoever? Yeah, he's not reliable, is he? He really, really isn't reliable. And for him to turn around and say, well, all the other evidence that, you know, NGN wants, you know, I've absolutely turned me house upside down to try and find the, the things that they want and uh, I can't find it. Well, he turned his house upside down and couldn't find it, the hard drive until he did. Oh, come on, come on. Of course, a big conspiracy theory, whatever, he's dragging his feet. 
and had to be dragged kicking and screaming and has set up some kind of obstacle course. Of course. He wants to make it extremely difficult for News Group newspaper to actually win. Of course he wants to do that. Come on. Come on. Opinion conspiracy theory, whatever. Uh, Mr. Sherborne said it had taken 130 hours to search 35,000 emails and that only a handful were relevant, describing it as an utterly disproportionate exercise. Well, no, because if it was an utterly disproportionate exercise, then it would be the search 35,000 emails and none were relevant. Actually, it was a good exercise because they sent 35,000 emails and a handful were relevant, which means what? That means that when NGN said, right, I want the, we want these emails, this, that, and the other, right? What did Hazard's team do? They overloaded them with paperwork, opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, to try and make it difficult for NGN to find what they want in discovery. But guess what? NGN lawyers are extremely clever and found the handful of emails, as far as I'm concerned, Hazard's lawyers try to hide within the 35,000 emails. One utterly disproportionate exercise. It was an extremely important exercise because they found exactly what they were looking for, even if it was a handful. Uh, his lawyer then says NGN had had two years to make the disclosure application, but had previously chosen not to with no explanation for the delay. So what? The trial is still set for January next year. They still have time to request evidence for discovery to prepare for the trial in January. Um, the judge said there was the little matter of the application to strike the whole claim out. And uh, yeah, the hearing continues. But guys, your eyes are not deceiving you. Breaking news. Prince Hazard has been accused of deliberately destroying evidence in his latest phone hacking case against newsgroup newspapers. If anything else breaks, I will be on it like Donkey Kong on a bonnet. With that being said, if you appreciated this video and you want more, believe me, I'm expecting there's going to be more here, then make sure you subscribe to join our Alt and Her tribe because I'll be honest with you, help us now get to a million so we can also get that gold play button right there and hopefully cause a Meghan Markle meltdown on Instagram. Like, share, comment down below your opinion, conspiracy theories, whatever's. Also, so as well, if you've got some very strong opinions about Prince Hazard being accused of deliberately destroying evidence in his phone hacking case, and I bet you do, then make sure you send me a super thanks. It's just below this video right here. We can have a conversation about this because it does guarantee a response from me. And until the next time, you guys, laters.